Hi everyone, Sam here. I'm going to do my JMT 2018 gear video today. Kath is still working on her. She's been a busy bee uh, back there packing in her office there are all of our resupply buckets. We are going to do uh, an updated video or, or a video on uh, our uh, resupply uh, food so you'll get a chance to see all of that. We'll talk to you about it all and how we're going to resupply this year. But uh, Kath's uh, uh, gear video will come out here probably in the next week. Uh, the very first thing I want to do is uh, explain what this is here. I'm going to use this piece of paper. I would suggest that you uh, make up a Excel file or whatever you have to, to, to track an inventory and just put down the items that you're going to be taking and that way you can use it uh, as a dual purpose thing. Number one is you can use it if you're using Excel, you can set it up to where once you put the weights in, it'll add it all up for you and you can determine how much weight you'll be carrying on your uh, base weight. And then uh, the other thing that's uh, good about the paperwork is you can use this as a checklist when you get ready to start packing up all of your gear to make sure you don't leave anything at home that you may uh, absolutely have to have out on the trail. So I want to start, I'm going to go through and so I've got it laid out here in the room. You can, Kat can kind of pan around the room. I've got all my gear laid out here this afternoon. And I'm gonna talk about each individual piece of gear very briefly, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm, what I'm gonna be taking. So we're gonna start over here with my pack, which is the Hyperlight Mountain uh, Southwest 4400. Waterproof. The uh, material is what they call Dyneema or Cuban fiber, or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a waterproof pack. You can roll. These are the packs where you put the stuff in, and then you roll the the uh, packing down over on top of it, and then you can strap all of that down. Uh, the next thing is uh, the tent liner Kath is going to be carrying, so she'll show you that in her video. But that brings me to the, my watch and altimeter. I got a watch with an altimeter on it, it's a Casio ProTech. Uh, good watch, it's solar powered. I like, I like the, the watch a lot. I used this uh, all last year in the JMT and I'm planning on using it again this year. It's got a barometer on it. It's got a couple other little features that are nice. It's got a, actually got a th thermometer, all kinds of little goodies there. Next item is the pocket knife. The uh, Bear Grills, I think is the way he pronounces his name. Just a standard, probably three or four inch pocket knife. I, I don't need anything more than that out on the trail. Next item is my compass. You can see we used this uh, more as a decoration last year than anything. I don't ever remember taking out a compass. The trail is so well laid out there on the JMT. You carry this kind of stuff along just as backup in the event that you have something uh, unusual happen where you have to go cross country. Uh, next item is the John Muir Trail Pocket at Atlas. Nice little atlas. It's got all of our waypoints in it. It's got some nice little maps in it. I also ordered a set of the Tom Harrison uh, JMT maps. They are um, the larger size are probably about the size of my checklist here. And they fold. And they're the shaded relief uh, top topographic maps. They're very, very nice. And I'll put a set in there along with my pocket atlas in there. All right, next to the maps and the guidebook there, I've got my trekking poles laid out here. And I use the Lecky Cork Light. You can see at the top of, of each one of, of these poles, I've got about 10 feet of duct tape taped around the top of this pole, and about 10 feet of what I call golfer's tape, or you can call it bluster tape. But uh, that's where I put the tape that I take along uh, with me. Uh, next to the trekking poles, we've got the, it's spelled X-I-K 
K-A-R, lighter. And the reason that I ended up purchasing this, this particular lighter is that it is a high altitude lighter. It will light above 10,000 feet. And if you're gonna be camping out just below Forster Pass like we did last year, you probably need one of these if your uh, stove will not light because of the altitude. And you can get the gas on and you can use a high altitude lighter to be able to light your fuel or your stove. All right, the next item on the list is my uh, mattress and tent repair kits. You can buy these little kits. Depends on what kind of equipment you're taking, what kind of uh, sleeping pads and tents you're taking. But you can buy these kits like this. We bought this particular one at uh, REI. Uh, we didn't use it last year. So, it's a, again, this is just a precaution. I'll be taking that again this year. I've got one spare canister of fuel. Kath will be taking the other canister of fuel along with her in the jet boil because she's carrying the kitchen uh, equipment this year in her pack. And then next to the jet boil fuel is we've got both the bare canisters. Kath took the little one last year and I took the big one. This year I'm going to carry all the food. I weighed it all out. Uh, today because we've got a couple of the, the biggest resupply that we have is the very first one that we do. It's going to be a 10-day resupply. So both of those things will, will be essentially full and counting the food inside of the containers there, the total weight of uh, everything will be about uh, 17 or 18 pounds because that includes the weight of the bear canisters. All right, next to the bear canister is my, what I call my trail towel. This attaches to the shoulder strap on my left side, and I can use this to wipe off my face there, as we can see it on the trail if I need to wipe off my face. If you've got to blow your nose and you don't have any toilet paper, you can use the end of this thing to, to, to blow your nose. I did have some definite issues with the altitude last year. So I use this thing quite a bit for multiple purposes. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we're gonna come over and take a look at the sleeping system, which is right over here. And you can see I've got my sleeping quilt pulled out here, just for you to be able to see it. This is the uh, Enlightened Equipment Revelation sleeping quilts. You can go online and check those out. We decided to go the sleeping quilt route this year because uh, last year we both had sleeping bags and we wanted to try something that was a little bit different, that was a little bit, we thought, more comfortable. We didn't want to feel as restricted as you would in a sleeping bag, so we ended up with the quilts. And then we, I have a sleeping pad, which is the Thermarest uh, Pro Light. Thermarest Pro Light Plus. I've got the large size here because I'm a six foot two guy. So I need the biggest one that they make. And I also ended up, I'm going to take uh, next to the orange sleeping pad there, I'm going to take the yellow and silver pad, which is the Z Light, my Thermarest. I'm going to take this whole pad. I'm going to use it as a sit pad. And then at night, especially in those colder uh, elevations there, I can extend that out. It's just about the length of my, my uh, sleeping pad. I'm going to put that underneath my sleeping pad and just give me a little bit more insulation when it's, when it's colder out. And then the piece de resistance is my uh, Philo or Nemo Philo, which is just an inflatable pillow. A nice little like a suede face on it and actually it's got a little uh, storage pouch that you can put gear in if you're sleeping at night and you want to have something that's that you can keep close to you so that'll that'll be the the sleeping system there now for foot care I'm gonna come back over here 
and obviously my trail footwear we've already talked about this in a previous video is the um, are the lowest so I have lower boots next to the lower boots the are the um, keen sandals and use the sandals that are waterproof using for both water crossings and also as camp shoes to wear around camp at night. I'll be in, what I'll be carrying will be two pairs of the darn tough socks and two sock liners, two pairs of sock liners with the toes, the Ingenji sock liners, as you can see here. And expand those out. There you go. So you can see the toes in those. And I'll be wearing those in conjunction with my boots. I'm actually going to take three pair. Obviously, I'll have one pair of socks on when we're hiking, and then I'll have two pair in reserve. And I'm just going to rotate those around and uh, wash a pair about every third day or so, rinse them out, and then let them dry out during the day. And I have a pair of athletic socks here, the short athletic socks that go up about ankle highs. And I use those as my camp socks with the, with the keen sandals there when I'm working around there. All right, next to the sandals, you can see my black diamond headlamp. And I've got six spare batteries for the headlamp. This, these, this uh, headlamp takes three batteries at a time, and they're good if you don't run them until they're completely exhausted. Uh, they probably last about between three and four days, and then you'll have to put a new set of batteries in there. And our longest resupply, again, is 10 days, so a couple of sets of batteries is all you need. And then below that, you can see what I call my hygiene system. I've got my dude wipes in there and some um, paper towels that I've that I've uh, taken off the roll there. Obviously, you're going to use that when you go to the restroom out on the trail. You have to pack up all your toilet paper and haul it out, but you're going to have to have that as part of your wag bags uh, system for going to the restroom. And then just below that, I've got toothpaste. I've got hand sanitizer. I've got lip balm, I've got some camp soap, I've got some eye drops, and some uh, camp uh, cord, tent cord, spare tent cord, and then a camp towel. Try to separate out the towels so that you're not using the nasty towel that you sweat and blow your nose on. You can use that to wash your hands off. Uh, clean out uh, your uh, coffee cup at night and that kind of stuff. Okay, we're over here to the water system. Half is going to be taking both of the water filters and the uh, tubing that goes with the water filter. So I'm not carrying that this year, but here's my portion of the water system. I've got a one tigress bag that fits onto my shoulder strap on my pack. And it goes on this side here. So I'll have this attached to the shoulder strap on my pack. And I'm taking three of these smart water bottles that you can see here so that I have uh, about a three liter capacity. I may not end up with water in all three of these bottles at the, on the same day, but there are a couple of stretches out there where it would be nice to have that extra bottle, especially if we end up camping in a place where we need, where we have no water and we need to have some extra water to get us through into the next morning. And then finally, uh, just as a spare, in the event that we need to carry any additional water, I've got a two liter bag of uh, a platypus bag that, that you can put some additional water in. Again, if you're spending the night at a, at a dry campsite, you may want to have some extra water. All right, so now over to the clothing. My, my clothing system out here. 
I'm going to be taking one pair of ex officio boxer shorts, uh, one ex officio t-shirt. I've got the Columbia uh, pants. I'll be taking one extra pair of Columbia pants. be wearing a pair, obviously, when I'm hiking, I'll take an extra pair. The thing I like about these pants, I only did it a couple times last year, but at the thigh, you can actually unzip the pants all the way around your leg, and so you can, in, you can end up making it a pair of shorts if you do, so desire to do that. Most of the time I wore these things with uh, the full length. Next to the pants is my uh, puffy Patagonia puffy jacket. Nice and warm jacket, fleece or a uh, down jacket, lightweight and very, very comfortable, very warm. Slept in that more than once last year because our sleeping bag, our sleeping system was not as warm as I would have liked for it to be. And next to the puppy, the Patagonia, I've got my marmot rain gear out here. Got a rain. Uh, jacket with a hood. I would highly recommend that you get whatever rain gear you get, you get one that's got a hood. So we did hike in the rain a couple times last year, not much. And then a pair of the Marmot um, rain pants as well. And next to that, Kath talked me into doing this because it might be a little bit cooler. We're going to be finishing up about the third week in September. So I've got a this is a Patagonia lightweight, kind of like a camp hoodie. You can wear this baby around camp if it's a little cool. Uh, and it's too, too uh, warm to wear your, your uh, down jacket. You can put one of these things on. you got a hoodie so you can pull it up over your ears if it gets a little chilly. And then I've got a Patagonia lightweight long john set for my bottom half. I'll be taking off my uh, hiking pants at night and using the long johns. And down here on the bottom, I've got my hiking hat, which I'll use during the day. And I've got, this is called a, I call this a head cover, because now that we're sleeping with a sleeping quilt, I ordered these from Enlightened Equipment. This is their device that you use to keep your top of your head and your ears uh, warm at night so that you, you don't have the sleeping bag equivalent of the head cover on a sleeping bag when you're sleeping with a quilt. The quilt comes up to your neck and you've got to put something on whether it's an ear band or a buff or whatever to keep the top of your head and your ears warm at night when you're sleeping with a quilt. And then next to that, as I just mentioned, is the buff. And for those of you not familiar with the buff, it's essentially, it's a neck gaiter. It's got a hole on both ends of it. You can pull it up over the top of your head. Pull it down over your ears. Pull it down like this. Bring it up over the top of your head. Lots of different uses. Pull it up like this if you want to cover the front part of your face. And if you put a hoodie on, any other hoodie, you're going to be pretty well protected from the cold. So this might be a little overkill in the, in the keeping warm department. But again, like I said, we're going to be finishing up our hike towards the end of September. And it's not unusual for them to have snow and some really cold, colder nights out there, even at the lower elevations there. And the final thing is I've got some uh, gloves. These are Cirrus, I think it's S-S-E-I-R-S, Cirrus gloves, waterproof uh, gloves. And then uh, last few items before we go to the camera equipment, I've got my uh, sunglasses. You know, sounds like we're getting ready to have uh, some rain out there. Always uh, take along some spare 
freezer bags. These are the gallon size, and I think you pulled up in there. There's some quart size freezer bags. You use these for um, your trash can. Uh, if you end up having stuff that's other stuff that's in a bag and it gets ripped or torn, you've got a replacement for it. So take those along. My uh, cell phone. Kath and I both be taking our cell phone. Uh, one of the reasons that I took the cell phone and we found it to be very helpful is there's some apps. There's a John Muir Trail app and there's also the Gut Hooks app that you can download on here. And when you get on the trail, these are they were both excellent at uh, letting us know where we were at. Uh, just uses the GPS functions of the phone. And the only thing you need to remember so you don't run your battery down on your phone when you're using this to navigate with is you uh, need to put it in the airplane mode so that it's not continuously seeking to hook up to a cell phone tower, which they have none of on the JMT. And then next to that is kind of the backup to the backup to the backup. I've got my Garmin 600 GPS. I'm actually going to use this the first three days because the apps in there don't have the area we're going to be hiking in. So when we go up to acclimate there at uh, Horseshoe Meadows when we hike out to the Cottonwood Lakes area, I'll be using this to uh, back up our navigation out there and back. You can see I've got a charging cord. Of course, I'll use this with, with my charging battery brick that I've got. But this is how I attach the uh, 600 onto my pack. Again, this is one that goes on your shoulder strap. And then you slide the, the uh, attachment point on the back of the Garmin onto the that you can carry it around and have it available whenever you want it. Next to that, I've got my journal. I kept a So we had some more editing issues with our video on my, um, on my pack uh, items. And so we're gonna pick up where I left off there at the end of the previous video. Uh, the next item on my list there of gear that I'm taking with me is I have a uh, journal that I kept on the trail last year. It's got a notebook and a little waterproof uh, folder there, a couple of pens, and you can see some note cards that I made up. These are my own invention, and that's just to kind of help me keep track of where we were each day and what the information I needed to put down for each day so that I could keep track of my videos and do that pictures as I shot them and on my cards I had the day the date the miles hiked uh, our starting point was from and then a two two point starting elevation ending elevation the weather I put a new uh, line on there for this year's hike called which wilderness area are we in so I can put that in there and then the remainder of the card the blank space there is for taking notes on the front and the back, and then the total miles uh, column is at the very bottom down there. You can take the note cards and just kind of add it up for each day and figure out what your total miles is for that particular day. So I'll be taking that. Also going to be taking my beloved head net. We use these four or five times while we're on the trail. It's in this little pouch now, but it's just a mosquito net, that, a bug net that goes over the top of your head. And this is really all we needed for when we hiked the trail last year. We didn't have a lot of bugs or mosquitoes, but it looked, this really came in handy, you know, the four or five times that we had to use them last year. So I'll be taking that along. And then the final items here that I'll, I'll be discussing will be my camera gear for this year. Uh, I'll be taking all of my pictures and my video here on the Garmin Verb Ultra 30. You can see it there in its little protective case. Kath is recording this on the other bird that I have. And it's attached to this Igenio uh, selfie stick, which is extendable all the way out to 48 inches, depending on what you want to do. It's very, very sturdy and reliable stick. I used this the entire time we were on the trail last year. 
next to the, the camera and the selfie stick, you can see the row of batteries. The camera itself takes one of these batteries at a time. And it, you'll be, I used about three of these batteries a day. They're good for between an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. These three batteries a day for all the video and the picture taking that I did. So I figured out our longest resupply was going to be for the 10 days and essentially I'd need 30 batteries but because I bought a power brick which you can see over here I can recharge all these batteries at least once which will get me through that 10 day uh, section that we have to hike at the initial part of the trail. And obviously if you're going to be charging batteries you have to have a battery charger and these are made specifically for the verb. So there's a little battery charger. You can see I actually have two of the verb batteries that are already in this particular charger. The red light indicates that they're not charged. When they are fully charged, those lights turn to green and you know that the batteries are charged. The battery brick I, I uh, am bringing is the uh, RAV Power. I think it's like a 32,000 milliamp hour battery charger. It's got three uh, USB ports that you can plug in. So you can have both of the battery charges that I've got laid out here plugged in. Plus you can plug in a cell phone or my GPS. It's got a, a USB uh, plug. Plug that in and recharge the batteries on that. This thing is going to be excellent. I'll have to take probably uh, We'll have one with me when we start, when we get to the first resupply. They'll probably bring another brick up to me so that I've got the, the power to go and I'll send this one back to myself via, via the mail. And then the final thing is that when you actually get to a resupply area or someplace on the trail where you can plug into a wall, which would be nice, you can, that way I can recharge my brick at places like New Trail Ranch at uh, Reds, at Reds Meadow. Uh, I've got the wall plug, the three, three uh, slot wall plug that you can plug into the wall. And then I've got three of these USB adapters which adapt the power, the current for your electronic devices. And I've got three of the cords for Apple devices like our phones and stuff. And there's the USB plug in for that. And so that basically concludes uh, my gear list for this year. Kath will be coming out with hers. It's hard to believe that we've got basically less than a month before we're going to be on the trail, or not on the trail, but heading out to California here and be on the trail shortly after that. So very excited, lots of stuff going on. And I hope this uh, video was informative for you. I hope you got something out of it. And this is Sam out.